Hello, and welcome to this screencast about constructing the graph of an antiderivative. Uh, in this screencast, we're going to focus on working from the graph of the function little f to construct the, a graph of its antiderivative big F. Okay, so let's look over here at um, a graph, and this picture isn't quite perfect. It should just come up smoothly there. This is a quarter circle of radius 2, and the other three pieces are all straight lines. One is horizontal, and two are slanting, one with negative slope and one with positive slope. So let's start working out some values here. We're told that big F is an antiderivative for little f. This graph is our little f. And we know that big F of 0 equals minus 1. Just like we did before, let's start working out some of these other values. So big F of 1 then is big F of 0 plus the integral from 0 to 1 of F of x dx. Well, this says the area under the graph of little f from x equals 0 to x equals 1. So it's really asking about this area, which has area 2. So that's minus 1 plus 2. So big F of 1 is uh, 1. Okay, let's go along to F of 2. That's going to be F of 0 plus the integral from 0 to uh, 2 of f of x dx, which is, well, f of 0 is minus 1, and now we want the area I chained it before plus this triangle. The area of that triangle is a half times the base is 1, and the height of the triangle is 2, so that area is 1. And so then we get the 2 that we had before from the rectangle plus 1, so this is 2. Now I'm going to do something a little bit different here to figure out f of 3. The fundamental theorem, now we know f of 2, so the fundamental theorem of calculus also says that we could write this this way. The way we're used to saying this is f of th big F of 3 minus big F of 2 equals the definite integral from, zero, from 2 to 3 of f of x dx. Just rearrange it because now rather than counting up a whole bunch of areas I'm just going to use the fact that we know big F of 2 is 2 and say okay well this well now we're doing net signed area so we're going to get a negative contribution here the area of this triangle is again a half times the base is one times the height is two so the area of that triangle is one but we get a negative contribution to our net signed area so f of three is one f of four uh, i don't know what the area of that piece of the circle is but i do know what this whole area is that's a quarter circle so let's come along and do f of four that sorry Let's do f of 5, which we know is going to be f of 3 plus the definite integral from 3 to 5 of f of x dx. And so now we need this. No, well, we know f of 3 is 1. Now the area here, the radius is 2, so the area is a quarter circle, so we get a quarter of pi times 2 squared. So that's just pi. Again, it's below the axis, so the net signed area contribution, we get a minus pi. Okay, one minus pi. That's perfectly good number. Um, f of 6, we can also do, and we'll do that as f of 5 plus the integral from 5 to 6, f of x dx. And now we're just concerned about, again, positive contribution to net signed area. Area is a half times the base is one times the height is one, so the area of that triangle is a half. And so we have one minus pi plus a half, which we might write as three halves minus pi. So now we've collected a whole bunch of values uh, using geometry of big F. And now we want to work on sketching a graph. So I'm going to jump over here, and here we've got still our graph of little f of x. And here I want to plot a graph of big F of x. And I've just plotted as a starting point the points whose values were either given from our initial condition, 
or the five points whose values we calculated um, on the previous slide. Now let's think about what's happening as we go from x equals 0 to x equals 1. We see that this is little f. This is little f equals the derivative of big F, right? That's the very definition of big F being an antiderivative. So we expect little f or big F to be increasing here since its derivative little f is positive. And what's its second derivative doing here? Well, the second derivative of big F is the first derivative, let's say, second derivative of big F is the first derivative of little f. And that's zero here because the tangent lines are horizontal. So um, we'd expect no concavity um, here. It's neither concave up nor concave down. And we see this the increase is at a constant rate. As we move along here, the area underneath this increases at a rate that never changes. So big F should increase at a constant rate, be a straight line. Now here, we see that um, little f prime equals big F double prime is negative, because the tangent lines to this graph have negative slope. Um, and so we're expecting to be concave down. We're expecting big F to be concave down all the way from up here to here. And here, from 1 to 2, we need um, big F to be increasing because little f, it's the derivative of big F, is positive. So we need to be increasing concave down. So it looks something like that. And now here, from 2 to 3, f, little f is negative, so big F is decreasing. So we want something that's decreasing and concave down. Here, uh, we see that um, f prime, which is little f prime, which is big F double prime, is positive here. Tangent lines all have positive slope. So we're going to see big F being concave up, but f, uh, little f is negative, so we need, to be, need big F to be decreasing concave up, so maybe something like that. And then very last, we're over here, little f is positive, so big F is increasing, uh, and we're seeing increasing at an increasing rate, or we're seeing a positive slope of little f, uh, so that means um, big F double prime uh, is positive, so we want to be concave up, so we should be increasing and concave up. Uh, there. Okay, so now we've got a sketch. It's not perfect, but we picked out a number of points, and rather than just connecting them with straight lines, playing connect the dots like you might have in grade school, we used all of those derivative relationships and our understanding of the concavity of big F by looking at the derivative of little f, since the derivative of little f is the second derivative of big F and tells us about the concavity. Thanks for watching.